What's up guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the different ways of connecting the Deco BE63 mesh system which should be similar to other Decos uh, as well. So we're going to start off with a typical setup and then I have a bunch of Ethernet cables, I have an optional switch. Um, so I'll, we're going to run it, run through the whole thing. I'll show you guys wired and wireless backhaul mixing and matching and just really the various ways of connecting it by actually making the connection. So we'll start off with a typical setup. So I have a cable modem right here and I have a router, which again is a typical setup. Now, if you have a cable modem router combo, you would need to disable the router portion of that. And the way you typically would do that is on the bottom, there's info that I'm currently hiding on this one, but it, usually it's like an IP address or something like that where you type it into a browser, you would log in and then it would basically give you an option to enable bridge mode, disable router or some other similar option. Uh, or optionally you could call your ISP, which is your internet service provider and ask them to switch it out or you can ask your ISP how you would disable the router portion of that. So in this demonstration, we're gonna assume that this is just a modem. Uh, and if you have an ONT, that's also fine. So I actually currently run an ONT because I have fiber optic internet. Uh, but whether you're running ONT, a cable modem, DSL, uh, whatever your internet source is, uh, just assume that that's this guy right here. Okay, so a typical setup is when you have your modem, again, ONT or DSL or whatever, connected to your router. And the advantage you get with the mesh system is that if you're running, um, essentially, if you're not getting the best coverage, like a couple rooms away, let's say you have this router and it works great as long as you're near it, uh, but as soon as you get further away, the coverage is not that great or things are cutting out or really you're just not getting the speeds you want. That's kind of where a mesh system comes into play. And that mesh system is really two or more units that it's designed to increase your Wi-Fi coverage because it acts together uh, to do that. So instead of having one, you have two or three or four or five of them uh, working together. So uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove your router and base it, basically put it aside and the reason you're doing that is because in the case of the Deco, all three of these are actually routers. Uh, but the one you hook up to your modem becomes your main router. The other ones, even though they're physically routers, act as access points or extenders or satellites or nodes. Um, but basically, only the main one hooked up to your modem is the one that acts as the router. So in my case, I actually put a little sticker right here that says main. Um, and this is basically going to act as my router. Now I could have, again, picked any one of the three and the one I hooked up, that would be it. So in the case of the Deco, uh, most Decos, I'm trying to think if there is any Deco that's not auto-sensing. There might be, but most of the Decos that I've been testing are auto-sensing ports, which means the Ethernet port coming from your modem can go to any one of these ports. It doesn't matter and it will automatically detect it. So you could put it at the first one, second, third, or fourth, doesn't matter. Um, at this point, obviously, if you power this on, power on the modem and, and everything, and you would get the Deco app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. In fact, when you get the Deco app, it walks you through the process. It tells you like, oh, disconnect your, uh, I'll power off your modem, wait two minutes, power this on, wait till this thing blinks, and then go ahead and follow the set of procedures. Uh, so in this case, we're going to concentrate on the physical connections. But basically, you follow the instructions through the Deco app, you plug it in like this, at this point, you pick your Wi-Fi name and password, and if you want, you can actually pick the same Wi-Fi name and password as your existing router that you removed, and your devices should automatically connect to this new one without going and having to basically reset the settings on those. So it will automatically connect to the Deco again, assuming you use the same Wi-Fi name, Wi-Fi name being your SSID and password, and they're both case sensitive. So both, even the Wi-Fi name is case sensitive. Okay. So once you get this set up, your network is now back up and running and it's basically the equivalent of what you removed with the router. Now you would basically plug in your access points. If you have a two pack, you would just plug one of them in. If you have a three pack, you plug uh, both of these in and the Deco app will automatically detect it. It'll search for it. It'll detect it and it will automatically add this to your network. Now in this case, if these are wirelessly talking to your router, you now have a wireless backhaul configuration. So between this, this, this is a wireless backhaul, and this to this, that's a wireless backhaul. And if you want, you could also have it like this, and then have 
this here, and then this talking to this. However, in this case, typically you don't get the best coverage because now you have two hops instead of one hop. So if you're connecting to this, you have really good speeds. If you're connecting to this, with the Deco, the Wi-Fi 7 ones, they're actually pretty fast. Um, but the farther away you get, now this has to hop twice. So you're, if you're connecting to this one, it's not going to be as fast as if you're connecting to this one. It's not going to be as fast as if you're connecting to that one. Um, so if you can, which is not always possible, you always kind of want the router centrally placed because the nodes will uh, try to connect to the main router directly. Okay, so wireless backhaul configuration, again, your network is up and running and now you have more coverage and because this is a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system, you're actually gonna get pretty good speeds throughout. Obviously, you will get the best possible speeds when you're close to this, but even near these, you will get some pretty good speeds. Now, you, do not, you don't have to actually, when you connect to the Wi-Fi name and password, your SSID basically, I said, and password. Uh, when you connect to the SSID with your Wi-Fi device, and you're closer to this one, it will connect you to this one. When you walk throughout your home, you get closer to this one, it will automatically switch you over. There's nothing you need to do on your phone. It won't lag, like if you're watching a video or something like that, it's not gonna lag and then switch over to this one and rebuffer. It's, it's all seamless. That's the beauty of the mesh system. So you connect to one Wi-Fi name and no matter where you're walking, you are golden. Okay, so next we get to wired backhaul. And wired backhaul allows you to get uh, even better speeds. Uh, so what you would do to get to wired backhaul, and you can mix and match, that's a question I get asked, can I mix and match wired and wireless backhaul? And the answer is yes. So in order to get to wired backhaul, you basically would connect um, any one of these ports off your main router, um, and then you would connect that to the other node. Now, typically, um, in my case, like I have Ethernet going through the walls uh, in the attic, basically, and coming out through another room. So essentially, this is what I do. I typically run wired backhaul, unless I'm testing for wireless backhaul during my reviews. Um, but normally, I just run it through uh, wired backhaul like this, and I am golden. So now, you have a wired backhaul here and a wireless backhaul here. And the wired backhaul is sometimes called Ethernet backhaul. Now, from this, if you want, you can go, this is, this is where it gets interesting because you could now pretty much connect it various ways. So you can go from the router, if you wanted to do all wired, you could go from another port and then connect it to the other one. And now you have a, would have a full wired backhaul network. You could also, if you wanted to, go from this access point to this other access point. That would also be fine. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're going from router to both of these, or you could go from router to this one, and this one could go to this one, and this one could go even to another one. So all of that's fine. The most important thing is that the modem goes directly to the router. So this yellow cable right here, that's the most important thing. Um, aside from that, you have a lot of free choice. So once you get out of this, you could make various connections. Now, the next point we talk about is, let's say you want more Ethernet ports. Well, the way you get that is by getting a switch. Now, an unmanaged switch is the cheaper of the two solutions. You can also get a managed switch. But a managed switch gives you additional options, like you could do separate VLANs. You could, you could get one that has PoE, power over Ethernet. But um, that's more if you're like really customizing something because uh, managed switches cost a lot more than unmanaged switches. Unmanaged switches uh, like this one are very inexpensive and they just simply add ports. So in this case, if I wanted to, I would basically just, you know, and, and I could pick the router, I could pick this access point, I could pick this access point, it doesn't actually matter. Um, but I could basically plug in an Ethernet port here and then on the switch itself. And here's the other cool thing. The switch brand name doesn't matter. So you, I could get Netgear and it could work with the Deco. I could get TP-Link and I'll work with obviously with the Deco. Um, and I can get another brand name for the switch and it would also work with the Deco. Um, so that's something to note. And I could pick any one of the ports I want. I could pick number one, I could pick four, I could pick eight. I typically pick the first one or the last one, just so I know which one the source is. Uh, now that I did this, now I have all these additional ports. So I'll, because this is an eight port switch, 
Now I have seven other usable ports. So now if I want to connect my computer, let's say I use the purple ethernet cable, if I want to use connect my computer, I could pick any one of these ports. I could pick port number two if I wanted to, and then plug this into my computer or my Xbox or my PlayStation or whatever that requires ethernet, and I'm golden. I could also connect my, e my computer directly to the router, to this port right here, the, the remaining one. I could plug it into um, this one directly. That's all fine, basically. Now, another question I get asked um, often enough is, can I hook up the switch directly to the modem? So basically, instead of the modem going directly to the deco, can I basically hook up that to the switch? And then from the switch, can I go to all three of these? And the answer is no. So what the router does is the router comes up with an NAT, a network address translation, and then basically the router needs to tell this switch what to do. So if this switch comes before the router, the router won't be able to tell this what to do. So therefore the router needs to come first. So this is the most important step. So aside, aside from this, you're pretty much free to do a lot of other stuff. Um, but this, these two need to be connected to each other directly via ethernet. Aside from that, you have a lot of options, okay? And here's the other cool thing. So earlier I said you can mix wired and wireless backhaul. So let's do that. So what I could do is let's unplug that. Let's say this was hooked up to this guy. Okay, so we had a wired backhaul connection here. And this one was wirelessly talking to this one. Now the cool thing is that's not super obvious is that even though this is on wireless backhaul, you can actually use the ethernet ports on this thing to connect to your devices. Uh, and you would actually get really good speeds. In fact, with some of the newer ones, I actually do the speed test where I do a wireless backhaul uh, on my screen. And I actually do a speed test with something that connects to it via wireless and then take that same something, which happens to be my Mac mini, plug in an ethernet to a wireless backhaul known like this one. And I do a speed test and it's way faster. So in fact, I typically recommend using Ethernet even on a wireless backhaul node. And with that same notion, again, I could connect this to my computer, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever requires Ethernet, I'd still be good to go. I can also hook this up to my Switch, to any port that I want, like this one, and then now I have seven other ports I can use, and then I can use this to connect to my computer and use these other ports to connect to other stuff. I can even use these to connect to another unmanaged Switch as well and I can expand my ports that way as well. So that's pretty much all the various ways of connecting it. For the wireless backhaul, for my test, I typically do around 35, 40 feet away. There's a couple walls in between that it has to go through, uh, but it really depends on your wall, can, like how thick your walls are, um, you know, how, how much of a signal gets through, but you want these optimally placed, which is typically around 30 to 50 feet away. And again, in my case, it's around 35 to 40 feet away. That's where I run my test. But hopefully this answers your questions. Um, this is a general way of connecting this stuff. And what I said here typically applies to a lot of mesh systems like other decos as well. Uh, there are some nuances with other mesh systems that if they have you know different speed ports and things like that, or if they have dedicated ports, it does make a little bit of a difference. Uh, but generally speaking, um, you could take the same logic and apply it to a decent amount, a decent number of match systems, and you should be good to go. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, smash that subscribe button, like the video if you guys can, and I will put product links in the description box below in case you guys are interested. And I should also mention that the Ethernet cable speeds also make a difference as well. So once you get to certain speeds, you do want to get the faster cables like cat six or cat seven cables uh even cat eight cables and uh as well so um cat 5e is technically limited to gigabit speeds however in short short distances it can actually go faster than gigabit speeds uh but typically like at my place i typically run cat seven cables most of my cables are cat seven um with one or two cat eights and i have had cat sixes that i use every now and then uh, but i usually try to stick with um, cat seven cables. Okay. Anyways, uh, but if it was up to gigabit speeds, cat five V would be more than adequate, uh, just as a heads up. So with that, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.